diagnosing food allergy is kind of easy. You get a history, you do some tests, and you have the results to work with. Living with food allergy for the other 364 and a half days of the year, now that's hard. Peanuts are just everywhere. You can't get away from them, especially when he was in elementary school. They were in the cafeteria, they were on every field trip. When I have a special table at my school, and some people sit at it, and I tell them, sorry, it's only for allergies. Every now and again, nobody wanted to sit with him because they'd rather sit at the table with all the other kids. So um, that 20 minute lunch period can be the shortest 20 minutes of your day, or it can be the longest 20 minutes of your day. So unless it's gonna be food friendly for Keeson, it can't come in the classroom. And they have to go through, approve everything through me before they take it in the class. I'm happy to buy whatever they need to buy for the party just because of Keeson. Keeson friendly, like every, everybody has to have the same thing. We'll go to the school and you'll see the massive parties of kids that don't have food allergies. Pizza and cookies and, you know, nothing's worse than saying, well, I get to eat some fruit and popcorn. Why don't you walk us through, what are your food allergens right now? What foods are you avoiding? Um, peanuts, dairy and eggs, tree nuts and wheat. And when was the last time you had exposure to a food allergen? Do you remember? Uh, like a, uh, like when I was little. Okay. Pizza reaction. Really? You remember it? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, my um, babysitter, she was, I wanted to be a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Uh-huh. That was really And yeah. they do love pizza. Yeah, right. and um, she wanted, I, she said, can you order me a pizza? Like, like with the veg, with the vegetable cheese? And she said no dairy, it had casein in it. Yeah. And the allergy to dairy and casein reacted to it in his bloodstream and uh, he went to anaphylactic. But he threw up and she didn't know what was happening. And, she uh, gave him another piece. It wow. puke. I'm. I just. We had to wash my face, uh -huh. and then I. I got fainted, I think. And we went to urgent care. He got an epinephrine, and two epinephrines, Benadryl. Ran to the ER, and he had oxygen. Wow. The... And so, no more cheese for you. No more. Cow's milk cheese. Or right? pizza. Or pizza, right, because we were worried about the, the wheat as well. Mm -hmm. The caregiver stress of food allergy is one of the sentinel, evil, miserable effects of food allergy. They can't have a babysitter. They're scared to let their own family, the grandparents or uncles and aunts, watch their children. We were at a party at the Air Force Academy. I didn't know the difference between the pecan cookies and the coconut cookies, so I grabbed one. I ate it, and then my mouth started burning. And he actually said to me, I can't breathe. And um, more than the words, it was the look in his eyes. It was pure terror. So the car ride to the ER, um, I held a pen in one hand and asked him to just keep talking to me because if he could talk, he could move air. And we got him into the ER. He immediately administered epinephrine, threw a lovely shot into his stomach, which I'm sure he will never forget, and um, gave him all kinds of medication and watched him for many hours in a trauma room where they were ready to give him an airway if he needed one, but luckily he did not. It's traumatic in every sense of the word for the person having the reaction for the people watching them have the reaction. This year I've had one, two, three, four, four reactions. Um, I was in uh, Peru and I like asked if there was anything in it and they told me no. They said there was no peanuts, no nothing and turned out there were peanuts. And so I'm at an Incan room and about to go in and like my friend says to me, you look really red and I'm like, yeah, I feel shitty. I'm, I'm having a food allergy. <laughs> um, so I had to skip the ruin and go find the clinic because I'd forgotten. I didn't bring an EpiPen. I just had to get a uh, and big antihistamine shot, and that's what they gave me. I asked the questions, and the people just that I asked just got it wrong. And I mean, at a certain point, I mean, 
you'd like to be able to trust people, but they do get it wrong. Like my nieces, they'll come and they'll have nachos, but they won't touch Kaysen and they won't touch his things until their hands are washed. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't worry about them doing that stuff. Because I don't want him to live like, you know, just all paranoid of life. Like today he was getting a Slurpee, this is a prime example, and my niece told him, Kaysen, it's just a Slurpee, it's just syrup, straw, you know. And he's like, nope. And she's like, okay, it's just cherry. You could have it, I promise you. You know, I mean, I said, I'll go ask him. But he's just like, he's so paranoid. He's like, nope, nope. Every sometimes I worry about her not carrying her EpiPen, I guess, is my biggest issue for her. Unfortunately, she's gonna find out the hard way. I mean, it's like you can talk to your blue in the face. Do you have your purse? Do you have this? Do you have that? Do you come like, you know, I don't go anywhere without it. Your food allergies, right? Okay, will you walk me through your food allergies again? What are your major food allergens? Peanuts and all tree nuts. Okay, when was the last time you had an exposure? Ne never. Never. I have never had no, It's been such a long time. You haven't had, had a reaction to that exposure. If you are ready to use, pull off red safety guard. When it talks, see like through it. If not ready to use. Which we are not. When they hit adolescence is usually when they want to be like their peers, they don't want to be different, they don't want to speak up in a restaurant and say, oh hey, I have an allergy. Um, they tend to downplay it, they tend not to want to carry their EpiPen because it's bulky. I feel awkward. It's like I go to dinner with my family, but I think it's a different in front of your friends. and. They're ordering, oh, I want this, I want this, but you have to say, hey, does this have peanuts? Okay, it does. Can we make a pit stop at Wendy's? I know I can eat there. And you have to be in a bubble. And like one of these days, the bubble's just enough and it just, you just want to be able to say, hey guys, let's just go and just go sit and eat. So many accommodations, just not for me, but for everyone else. Like your first kiss, that's, that's really scary. Even just to ask, hey, do you have a pen? Just to even someone you might like or something. Everyone gets nervous, but to ask, hey, what did you eat? That's a little more personal, and if they don't understand why you're asking that, I mean, could go each way. Or dating someone and not being safe around them, and you don't know. I mean, you're putting your whole life on with someone else's. Teens and young adults. Ignoring their disease is, uh, it's a problem and it's a high risk for really bad outcomes. So I was feeling lazy and decided to heat up some frozen food that I thought was okay for me. And turns out it had cashews in it. I realized I was having an allergy within 10 minutes of the allergy of eating it. Um, I just started feeling tightness breathing and so I just went ahead and uh, stabbed myself in the leg with an EpiPen, sat in my bed for a while and uh, did it again afterwards. So this is uh, definitely the most allergies I've ever had in one year, um, in any year of my life. Outgrowing my allergies to dairy and eggs have been a big factor um, because I would check every single label because you know dairy and eggs is in so many different things and you don't expect cashews to be. This time it's that. It's definitely a case of me just being not as good about checking ingredients as I used to be. The, the number one treatment for food allergy right now is identify, avoid, and treat a reaction if it happens. On the forefront in the next 10 or 20 years, we're gonna see some really neat things. Uh, uh, one example, and it's not a cure, but it is a way to manage food allergy, is called desensitization therapy. I'd say we're still not there for it to be used in everybody's practice yet. There's a lot we still don't know about the long-term effects of the immunotherapy. If someone really can, what we can say, become tolerant and be able to eat the food that they're allergic to in, in any amount, at any frequency. Because we're starting to see with a couple of studies that patients that have built up some desensitized state or some temporary tolerant state are losing some of that over time. So in the study, starting with about one one thousandth of a peanut in grape juice, at some point it sort of broke loose and we had a multiple dosage increase in one appointment, which for him was tremendous. We eventually made it up to eight peanuts a day. 
he has experienced getting on an airplane and not having any kind of reaction or being around people. He, um, he can walk into a Five Guys, which <laughs> in the past I would, I would never even allow him to walk into a restaurant like that because he would start coughing and swelling and his eyes would run. Um, so to not have to worry about where you're going is really nice. I could actually sit with other people at tables at lunchtime. When you go to restaurants, you don't have to ask what's in the food every single time. You're far less worried about being out in the general public. It has been four years of fantastic. I wouldn't change it. Now recently, three days ago, they did a scope on him and it looks like he has eosinophilic esophagitis which is inflammation of his esophagus, probably caused by an allergic reaction, likely caused by the peanuts we've been feeding him. Eventually, I was eating food and felt like it was stuck. It had been stuck there for about an hour and I ran to the bathroom and I threw up for 20 minutes. Peanut, um, this is definitely a target for food avoidance um, as a uh, as a target for eosinophilic, for esophagitis therapy, right? For, right? for an elimination. The first words he said to me when he came out of anesthesia after the scope, and he said, is it EOE? And I said, yes, it looks like it is. His first words were, but I don't want to stop the peanuts. The IgG uh, is 39 now. It was greater than 100 oh. before. Oh, that's not good. We want a high IgG. So before it was over, it tested over 100 and it doesn't, like the scale doesn't go any higher. Mm -hmm. Just over 100 was the, so now it's down to 39. He's been eating peanuts every day for four years. So why now? Anybody's guess. Is this, um, is this hard for you to talk about? Yeah. You know, if the answer, and it's not the answer today, if the answer eventually is you have to take peanuts out of your diet for a little while, it's not a failure, it's just a pause in what we've been participating in. I've had more allergies in college actually than probably like the rest of my life. I, I was abroad all of last year in Uganda and Argentina um, doing two different study abroads. My mom was definitely worried about that some. It helps that I'm not allergic to dairy and eggs anymore. Um, that was definitely convenient being in like Argentina and Uganda. Um, but uh, I, I've loved traveling. Um, I think you just gotta live your life and keep doing it. Yeah, Ariel find it interesting to see what she does, you know, in life. Like, is she gonna just be a teenager? <laughs> High school I'm nervous about. I'm gonna be a freshman. I already hear the bottom of the fishbowl with allergies. It's gonna be something new. And it's not something everyone in, who's a senior next year, who's a junior, who's a sophomore next year, is gonna understand. It's a lot of kids, and that's a lot of rules. And you have those kids who will follow them, and you have the kids who think it's stupid. I mean, that's what I think scares me the most. Like I try to tell Kisan, like, hey, you want a taco? And I was like, just with some lettuce and meat, tomatoes. He's like, nope, no want a taco. Do you want this? Nope, nope. It's like, because there's a lot of things he can eat, but he's just like not ready to mix food up. This is what I eat instead of other food without with with uh, milk, dairy, wheat, and peanuts. He's very like proportional kid. Peas, rice, meatballs. <laughs> I think he remembers like going in the ambulance and not being able to breathe and the EpiPens and like being on oxygen. Like that whole like remembers all the. So yeah, he'll never touch pizza. I don't care if you tell him it's dairy free, gluten free. It will be a lingering life <laughs> thing for him.